Today, I've got a probability problem from TBO's problem solving booklet. This is for students looking to prepare for their Oxford and Cambridge uh, mathematics interviews, which I know a lot of you have had, are currently having, or have very, very soon. If a round table has n people sitting around it, what is the probability of person A sitting exactly k seats away from person B? I'm going to dive into a solution here, and I'm going to try and treat this as if I was kind of in an interview, maybe skipping parts, uh, which I find a bit boring. Um, so first things first, as if I was uh, given this problem, it's a probability problem. So one thing I should think of, uh, are there any assumptions I need to make here? So maybe here I want to wonder, well, how are the people being seated? Are they being seated randomly? Are they being seated in a particular way? Is there some sort of distribution to how they're being seated? Now, in this question here, there's no kind of glue, but obviously in the interview, you would maybe clarify that with the interviewer. And I imagine they'd probably say, yeah, let's just assume that they're randomly seated at a kind of in a kind of a uniform manner. So maybe we pick names out of hats. So seat one, we pick the name out of a hat, whoever sits there, and seat two, and so on. So it's all nice and uniform. Okay. And we want to work out the probability of person A sitting exactly K seats away from B. So I guess firstly we have to assume K is less than or equal to N, because I, I mean, maybe you could think of like modular arithmetic, it's a circular table, but for the sake of this, maybe we'll say k is less than or equal to n. And maybe we would also want to clarify what we mean by k seats away. So for the sake of my solution, I'm going to mean k seats away to mean like if a is here and there's a seat there, a seat there, and b there, then they're going to be three seats away from each other. Because uh, that's one seat, oh, I'm defining to be one seat, that's another seat, that's a third seat, or kind of like a jump. OK, cool. So these are things that you'd probably want to clarify. And a lot of the time in Oxbridge interview questions, they deliberately leave things a little bit ambiguous, maybe a little bit unclear as to kind of maybe, uh, you know, what is meant by the um, just to kind of keep you on your toes, make sure you are kind of paying attention to uh, what's going on, what's being asked of you. OK, so now that I've clarified that. Let's now well, dive in. So let's imagine we have a circular table. Now, again, it doesn't really matter where these guys are being seated. Um, so let's say without loss of generality, A is kind of here at the head of the table. If A is not, let's say A is actually seating over here, well, we can either just rotate our heads or physically rotate the table. Note that that will not change the kind of relative positions of where people are seated with respect to one another. So we can assume that A is there. OK, so A is occupying that seat. Well, how many seats are left? Well, there's going to be n minus one seats left over. So n minus one seats, oops, all the way around here. And now, what's the probability that k uh, b is sitting exactly k seats away from uh, person a? Well, if k is a small number, let's say two or something, well, there's only two spots that k could be sat in, either this one or this one. In which case, the probability uh, which we'll call p here, is just going to be 2 over n minus 1. Because there's two possible spaces for b to be sat in, in order for it to be k seats away from person b. But why is it important there that k is a small number? Well, if k is a large number, well, we get something similar. If k is like, let's say, n minus 2, oh, if, if let's say k is n minus 3, well, then, if you're sitting n minus three seats away from A, I guess that would go all the way around up to somewhere here. Because remember, there's n minus one seats in total, so n minus three uh, would be essentially the same as like two seats away from A. Um, similarly, on this side. And that'd be nice and nice and handy. But what if K is roughly n over two? Well, then we could have an issue that, well, there's only one seat that B could be sat in. So we have to consider that case. So let's use maybe some examples with some actual numbers here, just to see when that occurs. So let's look at when n equals 6. So we've got six people sat on a table. And we've got a there in position 1. And we've got position 2 there, position 3 here. 4, four is kind of diametrically opposite. Uh, 1, and got 5, and then 6, like so. OK, so now, in this very special case, if k equals 3, which notice is n over 2, then if then there's only one spot that B could be sat in to be sitting K seats away from A, which is diametrically opposite. And what's the probability of that? Well, it's only one over N minus one. So in this case, one over five. But in general, one over N minus one. 
So the answer to this, we can kind of write as two different cases. So uh, case one is if n is even, n even, and then k equals n over 2, in which case p equals, as we say here, 1 over n minus 1. Or case 2 is just, well, the anything else happens, then we know that k, so p is equal to uh, 2 over n minus 1. And that there would be our solution here. I guess also one assumption that I've made is that n is at least 2 um, for this to make any sense, but I guess that that's probably a very implicit assumption. Anyway, I hope this does make sense. This problem is really easy to kind of get overwhelmed by because if you don't make this assumption at the start that A is at the head of the table, right at you know the, the top of this circle, you can easily get, get lost into thinking about a bunch of permutations and stuff. So with a lot of these problems, you want to start by simplifying um, and trying to make a lot of without loss of generality clauses if you can. Um, that's how we would solve this one. Um, so my top tip or top advice for these sorts of probability ones is first clarify the problem. Are there any assumptions we're making? Um, in this case, we didn't really need to worry about independence, but sometimes that's something you want to clarify and ask about as well. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Best of luck if you have interviews or if you've had some, let me know how they've been in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.